About five years ago, my husband Adam and I decided that it was finally time to start looking to purchase a house. We had always talked about buying an older fixer upper home because we've had the idea that they hold more charm and character. Plus, we can appreciate a place that has its own quirks and we love the thought of turning something run down into something beautiful again. With that being said, I grew up in a pretty countryside farming town in Indiana that had more than its fair share of rundown houses. The surrounding areas have started to boom a little bit, with farmland being sold off and turned into new factory locations, along with new subdivisions for the people coming to work for them. I thought it'd be a great place to start on our house hunt. I figured we'd be a lot closer to civilization than I used to be growing up, but not so much that we'd be living a stone's throw away from our neighbors. Adam and I decided to take a drive one summer Sunday afternoon so I could show him some of the back roads of my hometown, also to see what some of the properties we checked out online looked like in person. As we were turning off the main road through town and further onto a more secluded country road, we noticed that the very first house on the left was completely abandoned. We pulled into a small patch of the yard where the grass was the shortest and where a gravel driveway used to be to further investigate. It was painted a deep green color which made it almost invisible against the tall grass, sticker bushes and weeds that had grown up around it. There was a massive tree in the front yard whose branches and leaves helped to camouflage this place even further. The house looked like if it was at least a hundred years old. It looked like it had sat empty for years. It looked neglected, weather-worn, and in need of major love. In that moment, it was perfect. There was nothing but woods across the street and no neighboring houses in sight. So Adam and I thought it probably wouldn't hurt if we just trespassed a little. I completely justified my reasoning by thinking, well, we're interested in buying the property. We're not here to cause trouble. We're doing someone a favor. We could take this burden of a house off of someone's hands. We just need to take a look around first. That's all. Plus, there weren't any no trespassing signs anywhere. So I was perfectly armed with my newfound inflated ignorance and arrogance to assess this property. We walked carefully through the bushes towards the left side of the house, where we noticed a well that was still standing, completely with bucket, rope, handle, and the original overhang. My excitement for a picturesque country house was building, directly across from the well. There was a side entrance into the house through what looked like an added on mud room. The screen door to the mud room was closed, however, there was a wooden door behind it that was half open. This was our not really intrusive because we aren't breaking anything to get in way in. It was probably in the mid 90s outside that day, so when we entered, we were met with thick, stifling heat. The kind that holds so much humidity that it almost takes your breath away. What we thought was a mud room was an extended pantry area or canning kitchen. It was tiny with one window, an old rusted sink, a small stove, and the wall still held shelves upon shelves of canned and spoiled vegetables. I remember thinking, oh yeah, this will be great. I totally remember how to can vegetables, and we can have a garden, and... And, and then I inserted all kinds of other giddy thoughts women have while in the throes of house hunting here. It also had the doorway in the main part of the house, and this is where my elation came to an end. Through the doorway was the kitchen, where remained of the cabinets and sink were against the wall on the left, but they were either broken or hanging for dear life, or both. The kitchen connected to a wide open living area, with one side having walls streaked with black that led up to a half-sunken gray ceiling. There had been a fire at some point, 
The windows on the wall were filthy, covered in dust or ash that made the room much darker than it should have been. My heart sank. I knew we wouldn't be able to afford a costly repair of a house fire, but I kept that disappointing thought to myself. The open living area had not one stitch of furniture, save for one small wooden rocking horse that a child would have. The floor was littered with magazines, as if someone had a giant stack of them and just threw them up in the air to see where they'd land. Curious as to what the former homeowners liked in regards to reading material, I decided to check them out. Almost every single magazine was related to dolls in some way. Porcelain doll collection, Barbie dolls, making dolls by hand, clothing for dolls. I felt a little creeped out about it, especially under the surveillance of Rocking Horse's dead, painted on staircase. But I figured that an old lady must have lived in the house before and I created a self-medicating idea that her husband probably died and this was the only hobby she had to pass her time. We decided to check out another room that was connected to the half-burned living area. Through the doorway to the left was a weird combination of a molded stand-up shower with handicap handles. There was also an assisted toilet next to it divided down the middle by a wall. On the right was a wall made entirely of built-in bookshelves. The shelves were full of paperwork, manila envelope books, and even more magazines. It struck us as a pretty weird setup, but though these people must have really loved to read while sitting on the toilet. My husband and I thought we could find out who the previous homeowners were since some of the paperwork on top of the stacks seemed to be old bills. If we wanted to look up property records, at least now we would have a name to go on. I grabbed a stack of papers and began to flip through them, when about halfway through the changes from being old telephone bills to printed out color pictures from the internet. When I went through the pictures, I saw that it was porcelain dolls. I put the stack of papers back on the shelf and picked up a small red five-star notebook. I started from the beginning, casually leafing through and seeing daily entries of medications taken, blood pressure and glucose measurements written in a neat hand. About 20 pages in the entries started to change entirely. They became crude drawings of twisted faces done in red ink. The faces had horns or bloody fangs, then full-on drawings of devils appeared in the pages after. I wanted to believe that a child had picked this up to doodle in, but I felt like this was something much more different than that. After the drawings, the notebook became someone's personal journal, written in what I assumed was an elderly man's cursive. It told of how he knew he was coming towards the end of his life, and how he remembered being just a young boy when his mother passed away. He described in detail how the wake for his mother was held in the front room of his home and how during those nights, he crawled on top of his mother's body in her coffin to sleep. 